This is a Middle Loop Quick Quick Class. Hi, I'm Jerry with Middle Loop, and this is a Quick Class, Part 2, in our series on Waypoints. Today, we're setting up Waypoints off-site. In today's Quick Class, we'll start out with a quick reminder of what's ahead in our Mavic 3 Waypoint series. Then we'll jump right into today's topic. We'll first show how to set up waypoints and points of interest. Next, we'll cover how to make changes to both, detailing a lot of the settings you have control over with each waypoint, and then some additional settings. Finally, how to save, load, and run your waypoint mission. If you're new to our channel, in addition to this series on waypoints, we also have a series on live streaming your drone, as well as many other drone-related tutorials. Now, let's get started. If you haven't already viewed part one in our series, The Introduction, you might want to do that first. This video and the next show two different methods of setting up waypoint missions. In today's quick class, part two, we cover setting up the mission before arriving to the location. This method is based purely on the maps and can be done from anywhere you have an internet connection. Part three shows setting up the waypoint flight on location by actually flying the drone to set the exact position and altitude of each waypoint. We've included a link in the description to the entire series, as well as links to each individual video. And real quick, I know we've covered this before, but we find it extremely helpful to use a stylus when setting up and editing waypoint missions. This is the one that we use, which has a different size point on each end. We prefer the fine point end for waypoints. And if you're interested in this one, we've provided a link in the description. Let's set up our waypoint mission off-site. With your controller connected to the drone and the internet, open the Fly app. In the bottom left, tap on the map to open it up in full screen mode. You may have to tap a couple of times. The first thing you need to do, since we're not at the location of the flight, is we need to navigate the map to that location. You could just drag the map, but to make it easier, let's zoom out a little first. To zoom out, pinch in with two fingers on the touchscreen. Now we can drag one finger on the screen to locate the site and then pinch out to zoom back in. In today's example, we'll be using the Statue of Liberty as our waypoint mission. And before you write a comment, yes, I know the Statue of Liberty is a national park and you can't fly there, but it makes a fun example. Okay, left-hand side of the screen, you'll find the waypoint icon. Tap on it and this notice about planning your waypoint flight will pop up briefly. You might notice this message regarding the C1 button but it really doesn't apply to the method we're showing today. Okay, tap on the screen where you want your drone to travel to first. And there you have it, your first waypoint. Notice that it defaulted to a specific height. I'll show you how to edit that a little later, but it's important to know that the height listed is not the height of the waypoint. Rather, it's the height relative to the ground where you launched your drone. So if the elevation changes between the launch point and the waypoint, the height of the drone at that point will be different. This is normally not a big deal, but if you launch your drone at the bottom of a mountain and your waypoint is halfway up the mountain, it's certainly something to take into consideration when planning your mission. Also, notice along the bottom this little square button that popped up when we added our waypoint. You'll get one for every waypoint added. I'll show you how to use it in a moment. Let's add a second waypoint, again by tapping on the screen. Notice it's drawn a straight line and calculated the distance between the two. Also, because now we've met the minimum of two waypoints, if you were at the site, you could now run it. Let's add a third waypoint. Notice that the path is no longer in a straight line. It's now curved. The software automatically rounds out the corners for a smooth flight. Also notice that as you add waypoints, it calculates the total distance of the flight and the duration. The duration is based on a global speed which is currently set to about 6 miles per hour. I'll show you where to find that a little later. By the way, if you accidentally add a point, tapping the back button will remove the last point added. Okay, let's quickly add the other waypoints to our mission. Now that we've set up our mission so the drone knows where to fly, let's talk about the camera and what it sees throughout the flight. If you look closely at any of the points, you'll see this little green arrow. This is the heading, the direction the nose of the drone is facing, which of course is the direction the camera is facing when it gets to that point. By default, it'll be set to follow the course, meaning it's always looking forward to the next waypoint. This might make sense for some missions, like a flight that follows a golf course or a river, but in our example today, we're circling an object, so we have a very specific point of interest. I'll bet you can guess where this is going. 
Let's tap on the Point of Interest tab. This feature allows you to set up one or more points that you want the drone to face throughout the flight. To add a Point of Interest, or POI, tap on the map. Now I'm adding a POI right in the center of the statue. Like I said, you can have more than one and specify which one each waypoint faces. But for today, we only want one, so we'll tap that back button to remove the second one. Notice that just by adding a POI didn't change the heading of the drone at any of the waypoints. They're all still set to follow the course. So to change that, tap the square edit button for the first POI. Okay, we'll change the headings in a second, but before we do, notice it defaulted to the altitude tab. This controls the tilt of the camera, basically how high up on the point of interest the camera will aim. Again, it's not necessarily the height to the ground, rather it's the height relative to the launch point of the drone. And by default, it's set to the same height that the waypoints defaulted to. I would imagine it's a pretty complicated algorithm that takes into consideration the differences between this height, the height of the drone, and the distance between the two. Anyway, we want the camera to be pointed at the head of the statue, which we've calculated to be roughly 250 feet. Okay, that's close enough. Back to the waypoint headings. Now let's link our waypoints to this point of interest. Tap the Link Waypoint tab. Here you can select specific waypoints, but we want them all, so we'll tap Select All. And now you can see that all the waypoints are pointed at the POI. All right, let's get back to the main screen. Tap the left arrow. Now that we've set up our waypoints, what if we want to make changes? In a second, I'll show you all the settings you can control, but first, let's move the position of that second waypoint. To do that, we first need to select it. To select it, you could tap on it on the screen, but I find it easier to tap on the square button that's associated to it. And now you can see that it's highlighted. Once selected, to move it, tap and hold the actual waypoint on the screen for one second, and then you can drag it to the new location and then release it. Okay, we're going to get into all the settings in a moment, but with this waypoint selected, you can delete it by tapping this icon, and you get this prompt. Now, of course, I don't want to delete this one, so I'll just cancel out. Okay, the first setting is the option for the drone to execute a camera action when it gets to this waypoint. Right now, it's set to none, but you could have it take a photo, start a recording, or stop a recording. I think they're all self-explanatory. Just keep in mind that when you run the mission, Make sure you check that the camera settings are the way you want them, like exposure, aperture, and color balance. Next is the altitude. We talked about this when we were setting up the waypoints, but here you can change it from the default. Tapping on this tab opens a slider which you can drag to the altitude you desire for this waypoint. And as a convenience, you can make the same change to all the waypoints by tapping here, and then tapping OK to confirm it. The next setting is the speed setting. As you can see, it's currently set to global speed, which is the overall speed for the entire mission. But if you want to change it for this waypoint, tap here and you can choose Custom. Selecting Custom opens a slider that you can drag to the desired speed. Here too, you can apply this setting to all waypoints. Just keep in mind that if you want to set all waypoints to the same speed, we recommend you leave them all set to global and then go change the global speed. I'll show you where to set the global speed in a moment. We've already talked a little bit about heading. Tap here to open the options. We've covered follow course and point of interest earlier. Manual lets you control the gimbal manually while the drone flies itself. Custom lets you set a specific direction the drone will face. We'll be covering these in more detail in a later video. Gimbal tilt is simply the angle up and down of the gimbal. Your choices are point of interest as we discussed, Manual, again, you control it manually while the drone flies itself. And Custom is where you set a specific fixed angle for the gimbal, from negative 90 degrees, straight down, to 35 degrees, which is slightly upwards. Next, we have Zoom. With Zoom, you can specify a fixed zoom between 1 and 3x. You can also set this to Manual, allowing you to change it during the flight. And then there's the auto setting, which automatically adjusts the zoom depending on how the previous and next waypoints are set. And finally, hover. Here you can tell the drone to just sit at this waypoint for up to 30 seconds before moving on to the next waypoint. And that's it for settings. Tap that left arrow to return to the main screen.
There are a couple more settings we want to take a quick look at. From here, you can either hit the Next button or these three dots. We've already talked a lot about global speed earlier. Well, this is where you set it. Drag the slider to your desired speed. It ranges from roughly 0.2 miles per hour to 33.5 miles per hour. So what do you want the drone to do once it's completed its last waypoint? Your options are to hover, return to home, land, or go back to the starting waypoint. Likewise, you can tell the drone what to do should the drone lose its communication with the controller. Here your options are return to home, hover, land, and continue the waypoint mission. The start point allows you to set which of the waypoints should be the starting point for your mission. Of course, by default, it starts with the first waypoint, but it might come in handy when you're on site and tweaking your mission. We'll be covering this in more detail in our next video. Let's talk about saving your waypoint mission. If you try to close waypoints by tapping the waypoint icon and you haven't saved it, you'll receive this prompt, which is a good reminder. However, be aware that you can power off your controller without receiving any such warning and you'll lose all of your work. Anyway, to save your waypoint before exiting, Tap this little icon and up pops the history page. By default, the name of the mission is the date and time, but if you'd like to be a little more verbose, tap on the little pencil icon and up pops the keyboard. Tap the name to place the cursor in the field, and if you want to clear the field, double tap to highlight the pre-existing text before typing. Now type the new name and tap the blue check mark. Tap Save, and then tap Save again. To load a previously saved mission, after opening the Fly app, tap on the Waypoint icon. Now tap on that little history icon. And then simply tap the image of the mission you want to load. And that's it, it's been loaded. We'll be covering how to run a Waypoint mission in our next video. You'll want to be on site for that. And that's it for part two in our series on Waypoints. Don't forget to subscribe, it'll make it easier to find the rest. Thank you, have a great day, and happy flying.